All right, guys. So now I've got the the guitar mounted totally secure here on this wood. I use some foam here and foam on the bottom to protect the guitar. I got screwed in there. It ain't going anywhere. Okay, so I've got it positioned. I've got the base positioned so that the neck is straight. I got it very close, straight as I can. And it's gonna stay in this position while I level the fingerboard. It's important that the base does not move at all. So I got it mounted pretty good. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Next, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my vibrating sander to take off all this lacquer. It would take a little bit too long if I was gonna do it by hand. I need a little bit of muscle to get all that off first. And then I can get my straight edge and flatten that neck. One thing you want to make sure, you want to evenly, you don't want to stop in one area. You don't want to, you want to just do it evenly so you don't create any worse problems. But right now that's coming off just fine. Once I get down to that wood, I can start leveling it. As my helper Leo is here helping me, right buddy? You helping me? Okay, good job. You're helping dad all morning, haven't you? All right guys, so the fretboard's looking great. I got all that lacquer off there. And a special tool that I like to use, a straight edge, and I use an old two foot ruler that I use two sided tape, put some sanding paper on it. Now I'm gonna flatten the fingerboard. And what you do, as you can see the neck's looking great, it looks perfectly flat. I think I'm ready for frets, it's got a little bit of fall away up here, which at the top of the neck, you kind of want it to come taper down just a hair. And it already has that. So it's looking way better than I imagined. Leo, how are we coming? Good? How's the guitar looking, Leo? Is it looking good? All right, this neck is looking amazing now. I flattened it all out also. I just rubbed on a little bit of a little bit of Sedona red. Rub down a little bit of stain on there very quickly. Just get a rag, you rub it on, and you wipe it off, and you get a perfect looking shade. I thought it might bring out that rosewood a little bit better. Now this thing's ready for frets. Hi guys, so I've started fretting this thing. So, uh, it's a little nerve wracking because you gotta make sure it's right. But come on down and look. If you start cutting from the top, the neck gets wider at the top. So if you mess up and a fret's too short, you don't waste it so much because it'll fit down here. So that's a way to, to save fret wire. I'm coming along pretty good. I kinda wanna dress these already because it's close to the body and I don't want you gotta be careful when you start filing that you don't gouge that you don't gouge the body or anything like that. But so far, so far it's looking pretty good. This rosewood like to chip around the fret, but as you see, most of it's gonna be covered up anyways. I drop a little bit of super glue on this. Now, gluing does not glue the fret in. Obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't glue it in. What it does is it fills the void of any excess air and everything else. So the fret fits nicely against the wood and, uh, and it's supposedly better for tone. I'm not taking a chance on it, so I'm filling it with glue first. So uh, I'm working my way down the neck. All right, usually you wouldn't use this specific hammer. A lot of guys use a brass, uh, headed hammer there. Uh, what I'm using is, is this hammer. If I need to tap on the fret, I put tape on it anyways. But usually I'm using this nice piece of wood, wood block. Tap on it real good. When I get farther up the neck, when my fret press is gonna fit in there, I'm gonna start using that. And it'll squeeze them down real nice. When you hit it, 
you want to hit it. The head of the hammer needs to hit it like that. If you hit it like that, you're going to make dents. Okay, when I cut these, when I cut these, I kind of leave a, like leave just a hair over. And I'm going to snip it right there. Okay. Now, when you snip these, it kind of messes up the tang a little bit. So what I do, I'm just gonna hit this with the with the sander just real quick. There, now those tangs are nice and straight. All right, the fret job's coming along, looking pretty good so far. All right, guys, one more fret to go. Looking good, no major disasters. A couple of them gave me a little bit of trouble, but everything looks like it's sitting pretty flat. So I'm happy. All right, guys, I got them all in. I'm just uh, fixing the frets, file them a little bit. You want to round the corners. Uh, this isn't the ultimate way to do it. If I had it set up, I would have a little jig set up. But anyways, this is working fine for me. I'm getting these all smoothed out. All right, guys, so the fret job's done. It came out great. It's nice and flat. The dead spot right there is gone. It's nice now. Now that I stripped that lacquer off, I think I like it a lot better, just bare wood there. And it seems like the tone is gonna to be better too. It, it's a little bit louder when it's unplugged and it just, it just feels better. I don't need all that lacquer, just smothering the wood. It's gonna sound great. So also, I've upgraded the bridge. This is the hip shot bridge. This bridge blows away <laughs> the horrible stock bridge that Rickenbacker puts on. Those bridges are the worst bridge on any base. This bridge is great. This does the job. I've got Seymour Duncan Rickenbacker replacement pickups. These are the same pickups it had way back in 90, in the early 90s when I played with Ingbe. These are the same ones. They still sound great. Anyways, this bass is rocking now. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time.